we now have uh, Babatunde Kwame Ogala, a former uh, National Legal Advisor of the uh, All Progressives Congress with us and Senior Advocate of Nigeria. BK Ogala, it's good to uh, see you. Thank you very much, um, Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you. Well, BK, I don't know Good where to you are. To this fine uh, to, today is uh, Sunday afternoon or Mother's Day. <laughs> yes, today is Engineer uh, Yelaja's uh, birthday, and all of us are supposed to go there. Yes, but well, unfortunately, and, I'm and celebrate with him. Abuja. I don't know where we, you are, you know, but it's okay. I am here in Abuja. I am here in Abuja. Okay, so you so meet uh, you can't miss be with uh, that get together. Get yes, well, okay. Yes, of course, I have missed it already. Yeah, no problem. Okay, Biki Ogala, you are a major player in this party, the All Progressives Congress, and you are from the uh, Ashwaju camp. That's uh, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Chinobu <laughs> camp. What's your take on what happened yesterday? It looks like the CPC wing of the party has take, taken charge of the uh, APC. How does this affect uh, Ashwa Jubala I mean, the Tunibu's uh, chances uh, in terms of his ambition? Well, uh, Ruben, I don't know what you mean by a CPC wing of the party. Um, to the best of my knowledge, um, in 2014, three legacy parties came together and some elements of ABGA to form APC. So the day the merger arrangement was put together, signed, sealed, and delivered, and the party was registered, and the, pre the, other, the legacy parties deregistered, we became one party called APC. So this CPC, ACN, PDP, what a view that uh, we keep hearing about, it's um, for me an artificial creation of uh, perhaps uh, the media that sees a non-existent division. Um, in the Ashwa Jutinubo camp that you have uh, said I belong to, uh, we have a lot of friends across the nation that have come from various tendencies. Uh, I'm sure you also know that some of um, Ashwa Jutinubo's main support block our major supporters are persons who were not with him in the old ADAC or ACN. What we have today is one party called APC, and that is what I see. And that is what many of us see. So I wonder when people talk about certain blocks, I'm sure I won't be surprised if you even talk about ACN and you will go to certain tendencies of uh, uh, 1970. 1999. Uh, I mean, the um, Ruben, we have just one APC. And I can tell you that the Ashiwaju Tinumbu aspirations and campaign is working assiduously to get the confidence of all party members, all Nigerians, and that is why the man has been crisscrossing the country, appealing to people trying to gauge in their mood, explaining his aspirations for, to them, seeking their support without necessarily seeing anybody as belonging to any block. I can tell you for free, I don't see any tendency, I don't see any block. Ashwaji Tinubu that I know, that I relate very closely with, does not see any block. He sees APC, he sees a Nigeria that he wants to lead. Okay, maybe I should rephrase the question. Do you think that the APC yes. is stronger the morning after uh, the convention? Or that it's a weaker party, given the fact that uh, there are undercurrents beyond what has been reported to the public? Well, I'm not uh, under anywhere to know the currents that are going under that you possibly see that I don't see. Perhaps maybe you will educate me on what those undercurrents are. But if anything, um, like you said, this is the morning after. Um, it's about 4 p.m. now, so I call it the afternoon after the convention. But we've all worked events of the last three, four weeks. 
um, when at some point um, we thought the convention was not going to hold or was going to hold at some point where Governor Yaya Bello had to come in to rescue the situation as it were while Mala, uh, May Malabuni was uh, um, on medical vacation, as we were told. Um, then it was tense, everybody was unsure, but now with that convention having been held and a new leadership emerged, you can say, and I can confidently say, we are all at ease at least the morning after. Um, all the previous tensions, apprehension, everything has disappeared. And, uh, uh, well, yes, the APC can only but come out stronger. Now we have a democratically elected uh, uh, leadership as against uh, the caretaker committee that we had, which uh, left room for a lot of uncertainties, um, constitutional issues, fear of litigation, fear of um, how our primaries will be received, and all of that, and um, which was an issue in the Akredolu Jagede matter and the Court of Appeal, which was uh, the court of the Supreme Court even touched on. So now having a government in place, at least we are all at ease as we move forward towards the primaries and the general election, that at least there is a leadership in place that meets all parameters of democratic uh, party administration, meets all necessary statutory uh, um, expectations from the Constitution to the Electoral Act. So we can only but move stronger from there. Of course, after after a matter of any election, there will certainly be persons who will have their own misgivings. Uh, there were about seven persons who wanted to be national chairman, amongst others for several other offices who would need to be spoken to who will need to be pacified, who will need to be appealed to. So it's only expected that the morning after years there will still be talks going on and on, the euphoria, analysis, and all of that. But I can assure you that with the leadership of the party in place, and of course with our founding fathers, our leaders also not sleeping, they will certainly put the party back on track, and the party can only both be stronger. If I can tell you, as at this morning, immediately after the convention, it came out stronger than it was on Friday. But what do you think of the uh, uh, proposition, the thought, uh, the conclusion, that this may well be the beginning of the end for the All Progressive uh, Congress, the APC? And do you, have any, fears? Do you have any fears about that? And, you know, people have been talking about Ashwa Jubola Ametinubu uh, likely, being likely to pull out of the political party and uh, joining a third force, because people have been talking about a third force. Would uh, your principal, Ashwa well, Ametinubu, uh, be part of that third force? Well, you say people have been talking. I don't know which people you mean. No, it's in the public domain. To. I'm a public affairs analyst. When I say, right, well, well, you say in the public domain, by who? Who is the public domain? But no. I can tell you um, for free that um, I think I'm close enough to Ashua Jubala Ahmed Tinobu, and I still saw him I am a night before the convention. I saw him the day previous, before that day, and I do not see anything to suggest that Ashua Jubala Tinobu is working with any third fourth or fifth force anywhere. Ashwa Jubala Betinubu is totally committed to the cause of APC. And he's seeking his aspiration on the platform of APC and no other. He has not suggested to those of us who closely work with him uh, that he is not even giving it a thought. And you could see that as of today, Ashwa Jubala is perhaps the only aspirant in APC that has come out to say, this is what I want, and everybody can visibly see that he's working assiduously towards actualizing it. I'm sure if you were not at the convention grounds, your correspondents were there, they reported live, and maybe subsequently filed in reports. Um, it was obvious who uh, seemed to be 
to have the most support. And it's obvious. It's the only one who has even come out to say, I will aspire to lead the country. I mean, the country cannot be talking about candidates that have been reluctant, being begged or appealed to. He has to be a man who has a passion, has a vision, and has a mission for the country. And that is what this man has so far shown, that I want to take this country. I want to lead this country. I have a passion, I have a vision, and I have a mission. Well, pick your gala. So they talk about him pulling out um, is at best what it is. Some I do talk somewhere, not the Tinubu that I know as of today, is contemplating any such thing. But Biko Ogala, given the situation in the country, oil theft, mm -hmm. 400,000 barrels per day, um, foreign exchange crisis, up to about uh, 700 naira, uh, you know, to the dollar, um, unemployment rate over 15%. Everything ask you. Mm. Do you really think that Nigerians should vote for the APC again in 2023? Don't you think that that will amount to committing suicide willfully? Well, uh, Ruben, uh, that is an unfair question on me to be asking me if I think Nigerians should vote APC again. I do not know what answer you expect mm -hmm. of me. So uh, I will, like, all I can say is, yes, we recognize that there are challenges. We recognize that uh, globally there are issues. Um, look at what um, the Ukraine-Russian crisis, look at what it has done to the global economy in the last um, couple of weeks. Um, price of diesel and all of that. Um, you know, so you see, we, we, we cannot live in isolation of the rest of the world. I'm not saying these challenges are not there. I'm not saying these issues are not there in the country. But I can say for free, I know the government is doing its best. Um, we have the security challenge also there. And there are lots of distractions here and there. So all I can say um, with a man who is, um, who is putting himself forward now on the platform of the APC, even if you want to attribute some of these issues, to suggest that, oh, APC could not have done enough. What I can assure you, we can just but try to get it better. And Nigerians who have kept faith with APC till date should keep faith with it. Okay, BK Ogala SN, you are, I know you are uh, a Chinobu supporter, you are an APC man. And uh, what yes. do you think uh, uh, a man like Ashwa Yubola Ahmed Chinobu? will be able to bring to the table. Because a lot of people have been questioning his credentials. So can you say your well, um, briefly? Yes, like I can easily say to you, um, when you want to write an exam, so you want to be promoted in uh, where you work, what do you put forward? You put forward your records. What has Tinubu done when he had had the opportunity to govern, albeit one of the federating units that constitute Nigeria, Lagos? He made Lagos a, a model for other states to copy. He laid a blueprint. He laid a foundation. He showed vision, a clear vision of what Lagos should be, not just in four years, but in 25 years. He saw a Lagos, of the, he saw a mega city of the future. He set, he set in place um, templates for what you see in Lagos today, from infrastructural development, the economy, security. Lagos is perhaps, and arguably, and I think, I won't be out of play if I say, is still the safest state in this country today. Where I jokingly ask people, when last did you hear of a successful bank robbery in Lagos, for instance? And this, are for, this, is, this has come out of the foundation, out of the vision of that man called Balati Nobu. Can he replicate that for Nigeria? Yes. Has he shown experience? Yes. Has he shown capacity? Yes. Has he been able to use potentials, to use the creativity, the ability of people around him? Yes, he did so. He spotted talents. I mean, um, his products are all over the place. 
from the vice president of the Federal Republic to ministers, I mean, to governors serving and past, and who all were mentored by this man, discovered by this man, given the opportunity by this man, and have all also excelled. He has a good knowledge of the economy. Of course, like you possibly know, um, he himself is a trained accountant, forced it to even go to be taken into the stock market in the Nigeria, in the history of Nigeria, under his watch. Um, several ratings from Augusto, from free ratings. Lagos was rated, very highly rated, a credit worthy state. So if he could do that in Lagos at a minute level, like you possibly would know, if you join a bank, you join as an officer, as you go along, as you prove yourself, you are promoted to promoted manager and ultimately to the uh, managing director, which is the topmost in the banking industry. The man has been tested as a manager, as a manager of states. Now he's saying, make me the managing director of states. Lagos, like you possibly will know, is a mini Nigeria. It's, you are talking, you are seeing the Bola Tinubu, who is a tri tri tribalized Nigeria. It's the first person who you could have an Igbo man as commissioner for, for economic planning and budget for Lagos all through his tenure. You had the houses, a man who knows no religion, a man who is accommodating of various people of um, various ethnic tendencies, religious convictions, even political. And would you be surprised that that man today possibly enjoys much more support up north than even amongst um, those of us in the south? Because okay. what has he shown? He does not see himself okay, big as a tribal warlord, okay. like some have always wanted to cast him as. So I that is the in. kind of person yeah. a national, who has a national outlook okay. that you big need to Ogala. invest yeah. this very country nice. in. You've promoted yes. your principles very well. Don't go beyond the point where I will uh, begin to argue that you should be given <laughs> an invoice for too much uh, promotion. But thank you very much. Happy birthday to our, no, but our Robert, brother. You've only asked me questions and I've answered uh, yes, your questions. Yes, I know, I know. But about the thing, a but, man I, I, I believe in. Yeah, the thing was you beginning to You asked me questions. Go yes, thank you very much, BK Ogana, uh, SAN. Uh, I will take your pepper soup on behalf, on your behalf, when I go to engineer at Tayo Yelaja's uh, house after this uh, program. Okay, I hope you don't have a problem with but that. Not just the pepper soup. Please <laughs> add some shots of... My favorite cognac, you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> for joining thank us. You, Happy Robert. birthday, thank Engineer Tayo Yelaja, and thank you very much, BK Ogala, for joining us. Mm -hmm.